Hey guys, welcome back. It's Friday, July 3rd. Uh, we're going to do another run of the gasifier, unfiltered. I'm going to do a quick walk around here. So we're going to see what's, what's new. Right here I have a, uh, I don't know, approximately 1945 Premier vacuum. I think they were bought out by GE and that's going to be my, my stack for lighting there. But uh, if you follow this pipe down here, I have a lot of extra cooling pipes. I actually have two more in the garage if I don't get the results I'm looking for. I have a valve here that I can uh, valve off the amount of, of gas that the vacuum will pull on the system. I also have a check valve here to prevent um, air from being pulled into the system. It only allows the gas, gas to come out. So uh, that's so that when I'm running the Venturi blower, I'll turn that valve open and I'll turn this on and that's what's going to fire that up. Okay, so this is the type of pellets that we're using. These are from Lowe's. This was the char that was in the bottom of the gasifier that I pulled out, which is going to go in first. And then there was some leftover fuel in various parts of the hearth and, and up above into the hopper that I just emptied out. And that's the stuff that we're going to put in first because it's more or less dried. I do have a uh, a hold down system here so I'll flip this lid down. We're going to look inside here first though. So let me get my light. Everything looks to be in pretty good shape. Doesn't look like it's burned up at all. It's hard to see you know. But you can see I just have a little bit of fuel in there that kind of sticks to the sides as I uh, as I look down. You can see there's some some tar that builds up on the inside of the hopper here, but everything looks pretty good. So also one more thing that I got done. I do have a capture jar here, so. Coming out of the top of the expansion tank, the piping comes down. I have a capture jar here, just a mason jar, like you see everybody doing with these things. And all of this piping after this is all angled downhill so that it ends up in that mason jar. So all the way up to the vacuum, whatever condenses on the inside of that pipe should end up in that mason jar and I should be able to see it. Depending on how much I capture there will determine whether I have to put something bigger there with a pump to get rid of it. But uh, we'll see about that. Also, a little bit of work done inside here. I did start to wire those RTDs, so technically they are wired all the way up to the card. Uh, of course, I don't have the license for the software yet, so that's yet to come. But uh, I have a lot more wiring to do in here, obviously. And uh, right for right now, I don't have a 12 volt power supply for the ash grate shaker, so I'm using this battery, and that's just off this switch right here. So when I want to shake the grate, I just flip that switch. All right, guys, we're going to put this on the tripod, and well, first I'm going to hand this camera off to somebody, and they can show you how this lid closes. And after I show you that, we will fire this thing up. So you more or less just pull this down, and then this flips down against it, and then you hook the spring up to here. I won't do it right now because we have to add the fuel and stuff. Actually, you know what, we're going to do a quick vacuum test. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fire up this Venturi blower. Okay, so with the check valve in position, I don't even have to close that valve. It won't let air come back through the system and into the gasifier. So if I just fire this up and open that valve, it'll start to pull a vacuum on the system. So come around this side. I'm going to turn this all the way up. Oh, 
1.4, minus 1.4 kPa. I'm going to shut this off for right now. I'm going to turn this blower on here now. Now this blower is going to pull the system into a really deep vacuum because this pulls, I don't know, like 44 inches of water or minus 11 kPa. So right now I have the air intake blocked and that's why you're seeing it build up in a vacuum with no fuel in it. You're seeing minus 11.3 kPa, it's about 44, 45 inches of water. Now here's, here's something interesting. You can almost hear a little bit of air leaking in here, and I know that's going to play a, a role in how my flare looks, but I'm going to shut this vacuum off. And you can see how long this system is holding a vacuum. See, if you multiply that KPA by 4, that's pretty much what your equivalent in inches of water is. So you're still at 40 inches of water, and you can, still, you can see how slow it's coming down. I won't make you sit here and watch for 10 15 minutes as it does this, but it did take 10 to 15 minutes to come down yesterday, so it leaves you a good idea how, how sealed the system is. All right, uh, if you want to pause it out, we're going to get ready to dump some fuel in here and light this thing up. All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to fire up the blower. Before I do, I'll just explain to you what you're going to see here. I'm going to read off the numbers of what it's showing. Now, there's no fuel in the system yet. I just shut the lid down just to get a, a reading before there's any fuel in here. And we're going to run it full blast. That valve is wide open. The air intake is open now. I took the plug out of that, so that's ready to go. So we're going to fire this up. So right now, you're looking at 7.2, minus 7.2 kPa, with no fuel in it whatsoever. Now I'm probably not going to get that lid open. Oh, that, that air intake vented it, since it's open now. All right, now that our lid is open here, we should be able to fire this thing up and leave it run. We're gonna dump our leftover char in first. Hopefully it doesn't come shooting out the other end. And we're gonna dump some of our partially dry fuel
damn tall I can't even reach it. <laughs> I know, this is my fireworks. So 
I didn't take notice of what time we actually started this. <laughs> but it's 10 to 8 right now. Yeah. <laughs> It looks like it's a nice blue. It's like a blue. All right, you want to see how this RTD works? It's easier for me to do it if I show you rather than trying to hold the camera. You're not going to see it. You're going to see it over here. You're going to see it over here. Oh, I thought you were going to do it over there. No, I have, well, I have to do it at any one of these. So all I did was I flipped this over to resistance, to ohms, okay? I'm going to take this cap off of here. It's way easier for me to show you this while somebody else is holding the camera. So all I'm going to do is test resistance. Now the PLC is going to do this constantly. But all I do is put my leads, doesn't even matter how you hook them up because you're just testing across. And you're going to get an ohms reading. Alright, so 123.6. So 123 ohms, right? So walking away from that, and coming over here. If we look at 120, that's on the next page, 126 ohms means 150 degrees. So anywhere between 125.37 and 127.5 in resistance, in ohms, equals that temperature. So there's like a broad range of numbers that, so the PLC is going to constantly monitor this and put it on a screen in readable form and, and temperature that I could just look at. But I brought these charts out here just to demonstrate how they work. And there's going to be at least four of them in, in the system. And if I end up getting my hands on another um, RTD resistance card, I'll have a fifth one and maybe even more. And there's also going to be a thermal couple card. I'm going to put a thermal couple in the ignition port. So it's also going to monitor that temperature. into the system. But I also have two check valves here. So not only is this spring loaded for the hopper lid, but I have two check valves here, one here and one here, that in the event of a positive pressure situation inside this hopper, it'll blow out those check valves. So it'll relieve pressure or a poof or whatever through those check valves. I just wanted to point that out because that was one thing that I missed earlier. So I'll put this back together. So we've proved that the RTDs are pretty accurate. Well, the Chinese RTD is as accurate as the Chinese infrared thermometer. How's that? <laughs> Probably ought to shake that crazy.
not going around a temperature reading. We got 9.15 p.m. 190. About the same. 164 at the top of the barrel. 120. Going into the radiator. 89 coming out. at the bottom of the expansion tank. 79.5 at the top. Minus 8.4 kPa. Now. 80 degrees on the air intake. Some 67 or so, I don't know. Alright, I think it's time to do a walk around with the camera. <coughs> more smoke coming out of your fake cigarette than there is out of my gas car. You're polluting the environment. I told him there's more smoke coming out of his cigarette than out of my gasifier. <laughs> <laughs> That's nothing. All right. I don't think I'd believe it if I didn't see it with my own eyes.
coming out. to where that could go because there's a check valve right there that does not allow any air back into the system. So as soon as this stopped pulling a vacuum, mm -hmm. it's still, the fire's still going, I guarantee that. Oh, it's smoldering right yeah, now, but smoldering. we'll leave the lid. Let's uh, see if we can get some <laughs> fireworks on the, <laughs> on the camera here. To close the video out. Oh, I'm glad I didn't add more fuel. A little, a little spark of fireworks on the machine when it blew out. That's on tape. <laughs> that was awesome. Joe walks over to it. Just as just as I'm touching the button. I know, right? Right when that went up, the fireworks. I heard the fireworks. Uh, oh, I just saw some light in the Pump oh, number three. Or blower number three is going on. Well, Fourth of July, may as well get a shot of the American flag in there, right? some light over here Sean here let me get my flashlight out Can you pull that off please thank you I can put my headlights on Joe okay so here's where the pipe landed <laughs> that was pretty wild I actually blew the bottom right off this thing and then I blew the pipe out the top. Your light. So you burst the motor up and blew it up. Hey, <laughs> go big or go home. One more thing I wanted to throw in here, guys. That when that popped, it actually did separate the rubber coupling between the, the valve and the check valve. So the check valve stopped it. 
just thought I'd throw that in there. Pretty cool stuff. Okay guys, it's uh, July 4th. It's about 12.20 in the afternoon. Uh, I'm just going to go over some, uh, some quick clean out stuff here. I did capture a very small amount of water in the bottom of the mason jar. I haven't emptied this out. I will get to that in a second. I have my little container there to capture whatever water comes out of there. I have all the nuts loose on the access door. I haven't taken it off yet so I haven't even seen the inside. And then in the top here, I know it's going to be hard to see, I'm going to get my light out here. You could see where it kind of went into almost like an updraft mode toward the end there. This is the, the amount of fuel that was in it toward the end there. So it wasn't quite burned all the way out, but we're going to empty that out today and just go through some of the, the findings and see if there's anything that shouldn't be in there. So I'm going to pause this out and I take that door off. And, uh,. We'll come back to you in a minute here. Hang on. a little bit brighter so once again there's not a whole lot in here everything looks to be okay on the inside here I will uh, take this all apart and drain all this fuel out of here and scoop it back into a container for starting up the next time but uh, that's pretty much what I expected I'll let you know if I find any kind of clinkers or anything like that in here. Uh, a couple things I wanted to mention though that I forgot to talk about earlier. I learned a couple things yesterday. Number one, my Venturi blower is a failure. Okay, so that has already been removed and that hole's been capped off and and that's uh, that's gone. Number two, I showed you um, a shot of this section right here right after the check valve where it blew apart last night. And I'm going to give you an explanation as to why I think that happened. Uh, first let me walk over here. So here's the blower. Here's the vacuum. And the first thing I'm going to do is just pop this open here. You can see the latches, they don't even hold it closed anymore. I mean it blew the bottom off of this. And all I'm going to do is lift this up so that you can see inside here. Want to give me a hand with this, Sean? Shine this light up in here, just so you can see. Like pretty clean inside here. I don't think anything happened as far as tar goes that caused that explosion. Okay, but what I will tell you is what happened. In my opinion, is when this vacuum shut off from the electrical issue that it had. When I pressed that button, that's when it blew. So there was definitely a short in this thing. And when it shut off, this whole pipe that you're looking down the length of right here was in just as much of a vacuum as the rest of the system, all the way back to that check valve. So as soon as this blower shut off, an inrush of air came back through here, through the flare, all the way back into here, and mixed with the gas that was in this pipe. And when I pressed that button, it was like the charcoal grill igniter you know that's what blew this thing apart so I wanted to share that with you um, another thing is I noticed on this gauge that I have this CFM or CF yeah, CFM gauge you know when there's nothing in the system the thing is pretty accurate it shows how much air is moving through it you know that uh, that weight comes up and displays how much air is coming into it the problem is when I'm actually running I never see it move 
And the reason is because there's so much resistance from the fuel that's in there that it, there's not enough air flowing through it to actually make a reading. So in other words, I have the wrong gauge. I need something maybe like a CFH gauge to see how much cubic feet per hour instead of cubic feet per minute. So that's something I'm going to have to work on also. But that was definitely a cool feature, putting that check valve in there. That really prevented something really bad from happening, how much air could have been drawn into the system had that not been there. So something, some, some food for thought there. That was pretty cool. And I only installed that like three days ago. So that was like an afterthought, you know? So that's pretty cool. Um, here, let me hand this camera back and we'll just take this jar off of here and pour it out and see what we got. Pretty clear. Doesn't look like anything nasty. So that's all we got there. I will definitely have an easier way of doing this because this is not going to be this way for long. There's technically supposed to be a sight glass that plums into the bottom of this. It's not just supposed to be a valve or a fitting in here blocking this. I just haven't got that far yet. Wow, I expected to see more than that. I did get some on me, but... There's really nothing there. I'm, I am surprised. I mean, I only ran for two hours. But I'm surprised with the, how little fluid there was captured in this system. So that's pretty cool. Uh... We're going to pause out and we're going to come back and I'm going to have this uh, fuel drained out of here and we're going to just look through the fuel see what we find. So we're going to try to dump this slowly, make sure there's nothing in here that doesn't belong. It's like a thin, thin sliver of metal or something. It's weird. Is anything to worry about, but I just think it's weird that there's like what looks to be like thin layers of metal.
as usual. You'd think there'd be more in there, but there isn't. So that's pretty much it for the clean out, guys. Uh, I think it went pretty well. Pretty happy with everything. I know I have some filters to work on next. Should be interesting, and I have some uh, obvious upgrades that I have to make here with the information that I learned from yesterday. Okay, guys, we took this uh, this vacuum apart. First, I'll show you. I just sanded down the the armature a little bit, and there there could be uh, some issues with the. Um, the brushes in here. I'm not sure, but it does look pretty clean on the inside. So, I mean, it turns freely after running that long. But it's down there. I've seen something you're gonna want to catch. Right here. Hang on. Go ahead. What, the arcing? Look from over there. yeah. That's what caused On the brush, you mean? Yeah, that's what caused your explosion. Well, yeah, obviously, but I mean... Ah, those brushes look like they're pretty bad. So... Anybody have any brushes out there from a 1945 Premier Vacuum Cleaner? You'll let me know, right? Alright, guys. Thanks for watching.